Green is such a healthy healing color. I mean, like when you look at green, it's like the color of health. Hey guys, Petrina here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing with you guys all about spirulina, its potential benefits, and why I love using it in my life so much. Now before we get into it, if you are new here, please do hit the subscribe button and the bell to make sure you're notified every time I post a video. And if you love high quality health as much as I do, please give this video a thumbs up. Now spirulina is a blue-green algae that grows in both freshwater and saltwater. The main compound in spirulina is phycocyanin. Phycocyanin is a very powerful antioxidant and a very powerful anti-inflammatory. Spirulina is very high in protein. 60 to 70 percent of protein makes up its dry weight. Now that's still not enough protein to say you don't need to have any other protein in your diet. It's definitely not high enough for that. But if you are a vegan or vegetarian and you want some more plant-based protein in your diet, spirulina is a great addition for that. Or even if you're not a plant-based eater and you want more plant-based protein, then it's just simply a great addition just to get some more protein in your diet and any sort of nutrients that comes from plants is always incredible. One of my favorite aspects to spirulina is that it detoxifies your body from heavy metals. We get heavy metals from a lot of different things. It can be in some of the fish we eat. It can even be in our drinking water, but it builds up in our bodies. And when your body is not able to get rid of it fast enough, then it becomes toxic within our body and it starts to slow down our healing processes, cause illnesses and disease. So spirulina is just great because it binds to those heavy metals and then pulls them out of your body. So keeps your body and your blood very nice and clean. It's also amazing to protect you from radiation poisoning. We also get radiation from a lot of things unknowingly depending on where we are in the world. There could be more radiation in that area than other areas. Plus if you own and use a microwave, a microwave causes you to get more radiation in your body. And even for people who have had radiation treatments for cancer and things like this, you want to help your body heal from that radiation damage. Spirulina is also great at helping with hay fever if you are suffering from different allergens and things in the air then spirulina is a great addition to help your body deal and adapt to that. If you are suffering from candida, and we all know candida can be a very tricky one, and if you are suffering from it, then you wanna get control of that as fast as you can because it's very uncomfortable and it's just not fun when your body's being overtaken by candida. So again, taking something like spirulina can bind to that candida and help pull it out of your body so that you can get control on that a lot quicker. Spirulina contains chlorophyll, contains vitamin B1, B2, B3, contains magnesium, vitamin K, and it also contains iron. It is a nutritional powerhouse, and because of that, it can help lower your cholesterol, balance your blood sugar, and also balance your blood pressure. It is an amazing prebiotic, so it actually feeds that gut flora and promotes growth of all of our good bacteria in our gut. And our gut is so important in our overall health. It is known as our second brain. It really regulates our immune system, so it is so, so important and vital to living our best life that we put a lot of care and effort into maintaining a healthy gut. For myself, I've been taking spirulina for many, many years. I would say definitely 15 to 20 years for sure. I've been taking it a very long time and there's been times in my life where I didn't have it, say if I was traveling and I ran out of it or something like this, and I definitely noticed a difference when I wasn't taking it. So then when I got it again, I would notice all the benefits, which is actually quite good because when you stop taking something that you generally take, then you can really get a good idea of how it's affecting your body and what you notice. And then you really know what it's doing for you. So taking a break from things is never a bad thing. And it makes you appreciate it even more when you're taking it again. <laughs> more often than not, it is a staple in my everyday life. It comes in different forms. You can get the pill form like this, which is just convenient when you're on the go. You can just pop a few of the spirulina pills or you can get the powder form, which is amazing because you can throw a spoonful in a smoothie once or twice a day. You can bake with it, you can add it to different meals. So that is also another amazing form to have it in either way. But if you have it in the powder form, maybe it's a bit of an acquired taste. I like the taste of it, but I think it can definitely be an acquired taste. So you've got to be wary of that. Always when I take my spirulina, I notice an energy boost. And it's one of those things that if I hit a wall in the afternoon, you know, those times in the middle of the day where we kind of start to fade a little bit and you need to pick me up, sometimes I just take an extra dose of spirulina or another smoothie with another scoop of it in there and it picks me up right again and it's nice clean energy that you don't crash from using. Lately, and actually this is something that's come up in my life over the last few years as I progressively get a little bit older, I now get allergies and I never used to get allergies until the last few years and recently my allergies really kicked in because there was a lot of pollen in the air, it was really affecting my sinuses and I was getting lots of pressure in my head and it just was not fun. So I actually upped my spirulina intake 
and I promise you, it really, really helped me combat it right away. Like I don't take antihistamines or anything like that unless it's natural. So I just do things that can help my body adapt to the situation. Upping my spirulina definitely helped get rid of my symptoms because now I'm totally fine, which is so nice to be back to feeling like I can breathe again. I always take it when I work out. It really helps with my muscle recovery. I notice a difference when I don't take it to when I do take it, just at how fast my muscles recovery from vigorous exercise. And a very interesting fact is that last year when I summited Mount Kilimanjaro, I actually used spirulina as part of my supplements that I took with me to help my body adapt to the altitude and to the stress that was putting on my body because spirulina does have iron in it and iron is essential in the production of hemoglobin. Now hemoglobin is a protein found in our red blood cells and its sole purpose is to transport oxygen from the lungs to the rest of our tissues and our muscles and our body. As you get higher in altitude, the oxygen becomes less, your blood gets thicker and it becomes a lot more difficult to get that vital oxygen to all your organs and blood and tissues. By taking something with iron in it, it really helps your blood get that oxygen around to all those vital areas. Not only all those things, but I actually feel like a general sense of well-being when I'm taking it. Maybe it's subconscious because I know it's taking out the heavy metals and the toxins and the candida and the radiation out of my body, but I definitely feel an overall general sense of more well-being and energy and vitality and all of that when I am taking spirulina. That is why it's a staple in my life and in my diet and I absolutely love it and that's not going to change anytime soon. But if you haven't tried spirulina, I definitely recommend it. It's done wonders for me in my life and I hope it does the same for yours. So guys, that's it for today. And don't forget, without high quality health, we cannot have a high quality life. I'm sending you guys all high vibes, amazing health. We'll see you soon, guys.